Pokemon TCG Pocket has been out for a little bit now. It's been out for over a month in New Zealand where they got the trial period, and it's been out worldwide for a couple of weeks now. You don't need me to tell you that the game is a hit. We all know it's been downloaded over 30 million times, and it's raking in the cash as well, making millions of dollars every day. But I still wanted to share my thoughts on Pokemon TCG Pocket now that it's been out for a couple of weeks because I've had a lot of time to play the game. And we've also, now that the game is out worldwide, we've seen some of the support that Pokemon has been providing the game in terms of uh, post-launch events and stuff like that. So I uh, wanted to share my thoughts on where the game is at right now. And in particular, as a player of the Pokemon TCG, uh, one aspect of the game that really surprised me I'm Jet from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And in case you've never seen me before, uh, my name's Jet. I've been playing the Pokemon TCG since 2021, where I fell in love with the game and have been playing it pretty seriously ever since. I've dedicated this YouTube channel to covering the Pokemon TCG and providing players with content to help them get into the Pokemon trading card game. If you're looking to graduate from Pokemon TCG Pocket to the main Pokemon TCG, whether you're playing in person or on Pokemon TCG Live, definitely come back and check out this channel. Uh, but for the time being, let's go talk about Pokemon TCG Pocket and where things stand with that game. The primary focus of Pokemon TCG Pocket is collecting, which I think is a really smart focus because the vast majority of people who are interested in Pokemon cards or buy Pokemon cards do not play the game at all. And that's not a knock to the Pokemon TCG, just there are a lot of people that just love seeing the cards and love seeing the artworks of which Pokemon TCG Pocket has some beautiful cards. Yes, it reuses some cards from the physical TCG, but there's a ton of exclusive cards here and some with amazing effects, especially the immersive cards where you actually get to dive into the card and see inside that world. The, right now, there's only a couple in there, but I know that the game is going to add a bunch more, and I can't wait for those. And all of the exclusive arts are absolutely spectacular, and it makes me really jealous that we're not going to get those cards in physical form. But one can dream. I also love the pack opening experience in Pocket where you get that big carousel of cards and you get to spin them around and look at the front and the back. You can open them forwards or backwards and you get to slice that the pack open. It's such a cool experience and then reveal the cards one at a time. I love the drama that comes with opening the packs, especially when you get that 10 pack and you see all of them open up at once. Such a great experience for uh, being able to open these packs and give you that excitement like you're actually opening opening an actual pack. Of course, it's not quite the same thing, but it does its best to capture that feeling and that excitement of opening up a pack of Pokemon cards. And I think it does a phenomenal job. Players get two free packs a day. And if you want to get more, you can either buy the premium pass, which gets you access to an extra pack per day. That's $9.99 a month. And there's some other benefits to that pass as well. It gives you access to premium missions, as well as some exclusive cards that you can only get access to with that premium pass. So it might be something you want to consider, especially if you are a completionist and you want to get access to all of those. If you need to have that complete collection, then you might need to have this premium pass as well. But as a player or as a collector, being able to get extra cards is very nice. At the very least, there's a two week trial on the premium pass so you can try it out get that pikachu card and then you can decide to drop it before the trial period runs out whether or not you're happy with two packs a day is going to depend on what you're looking for if you're a casual collector two packs a day is probably fine you'll just get cool cards as you go and eventually you'll fill out your pokedex if you're looking to fill out your pokedex in a certain matter of time then two packs a day may not be enough and you might want to look at other options i think where the system gets problematic is that if you're looking to play the game especially if you're looking to build specific decks th this can be a challenge the problem with two packs a day is that you're not you're going to get a bunch of random cards, but you might not be pulling the specific cards that you want, especially when you're trying to build a specific deck and you're just, you want to build the Pikachu deck and you just can't find Pikachu. I've been playing for a couple of weeks now. I have one Pikachu and I'm serious enough about playing the Pokemon TCG that I know where to look for competitive lists and stuff like that. And right now I can only build like two competitive decks and one of those decks is just two Articunos by itself. I also am fortunate enough to have a Mewtwo Gardevoir deck 
but right now I have a lot of bits and pieces here and there, but I don't have a lot of full decks. And that is going to be kind of frustrating because if as a player who's used to either playing with the physical cards where I can go to a store and just buy cards or in Pokemon TCG Live, there's a really generous in-game credit system where it's not that hard to unlock the cards you want. Getting specific cards in Pokemon TCG Pocket is a bit more ah uh, it, it it's very much a, a luck of the draw with those packs now you can get more than the two packs a day there's a currency called pack hourglasses where you can reduce the cooldown timer on packs and you can earn a lot of free pack hourglasses especially early on when you first start the game so you can just open up a bunch of packs but there are ways of earning pack hourglasses even after that initial period so that you've got some opportunities to open more than two packs a day I also love the wonder pick feature where you can look at what packs your friends have opened and some randoms online and you have an opportunity to pick one of those cards as well. It's a 20% shot, but it is awesome when you hit that super rare card that you were going for in a wonder pick and now you don't have to worry about pulling it from a pack. 20% chance of getting it is a lot better than the minuscule rates that it is from pulling a pack. So I do like that option as well, even if it's still a 20% chance and that's also gated by its own currency. Oh, the game has like a billion different currencies to keep track of. We're not going to get into all of that here, but the wonder picks are a cool way of getting more cards. Pack hourglasses are a way of shortening the timer. Um, and there's also pack points, which is for those who play Pokemon TCG Live, the closest thing we have to in-game credits. You get five pack points for every pack you open, and you can cash these pack points in for specific cards and the this is awesome i do like the fact that if you save enough you have the opportunity to unlock rare cards but you are getting so few points and it's so expensive to unlock anything for example just a regular ex no special arts that costs 500 pack points and if you're getting five packs per five points per pack uh, you're gonna have to open a hundred packs just to have enough credit to unlock one EX. And if you want to get like the rarest of the rare cards, it's 2,500 credits in order to unlock just that one card. So pack points isn't the most reliable way of completing your collection or getting the cards you need. I personally have actually had a great time using it to unlock trainer cards because trainer cards for some reason are really hard to pull from packs and you need them in a lot of different decks. So instead of relying on opening packs, I have started using my my pack points and this might be the wrong way to go about it. I've used some of my pack points to get some of the trainer cards like a Misty so that I can build my water decks. And I have saved up as well to get some of the the other Pokemon, like I've had, I've been sitting on a couple of Mewtwo's and then I just didn't have Gardevoirs. So I unlocked the Gardevoir so I could play that deck. And maybe it's not the most efficient use of pack points, but it does mean that I can play the Gardevoir deck. And for that, it's worth it for me. One thing that could help the challenge of getting specific cards you are looking for is trading. This is a feature that has been promised since the beginning. And in the menu, you can kind of see that there is an option for trading that just isn't out yet. And maybe that'll fix some of the issues I have with obtaining the right cards. But we don't know enough about it just yet to understand what the limitations are with trading and how all of that works. So we're just going to have to sit tight until that feature is released. But for the time being, especially if you're trying to play the game at a competitive level, getting cards is a challenge. As a collector, yeah, you, you will eventually get the cards. But as a player who wants to play seriously, it can be a problem not being able to get those specific cards. And it can be really frustrating. You end up playing with whatever cards you just happen to have and building a deck around it. And it's been cool to see some of the innovations in the deck building space. We've even seen some budget decks shine in the competitive scene. But if you're used to being able to just get the cards you want, even if you have to pay money for it, this can be very frustrating. And it's probably my biggest gripe with the game is that getting the cards that you want is pretty tough. Now let's talk about playing the game in terms of actually battling. It's a secondary focus of the app and we can see as much because it's buried in the bottom right hand corner of the main menu and it's actually locked out until you hit level three. So if you're not spending your pack hourglasses to open more packs, it's actually going to take a number of hours before you can even play the game, which I found really frustrating. I did burn a bunch of credits that I earned early on, open up more packs so that I could unlock gameplay a little 
faster. And I will say this, like we, we knew that this was going to be different from the main Pokemon TCG. Maybe not everyone knows this, and let me take a step back. Um, the actual rules of Pokemon TCG Pocket are a little different and more streamlined than the main Pokemon TCG. I'm not in to gonna get into the weeds of like the rule differences, but there have been simplifications and adjustments to the core rule set in order to make it play better as a mobile game and i will say that the games definitely are faster than playing the regular pokemon tcg i think the thing that surprised me is that the actual depth of gameplay is still pretty good now no one's going to argue that yes it's not as complex as the main pokemon tcg but i think they find a really great balance of uh competitiveness and uh, deck building opportunities and decision making from moment to moment that makes the game really interesting in the context of uh, playing on your phone in five minutes or less. And we're seeing a bunch of different types of decks shine in the competitive scene. We've seen Pikachu EX is a super aggressive deck that wants to set up really fast and hit pretty hard. We've seen Mewtwo shine where that's a little bit of a slower deck. But if you've got Gardevoir and Mewtwo out on the board, you are pretty much an unstoppable force. We've seen some tanking decks, whether it's Executor with all the healing options, um, Venusaur with all the healing options, and uh, even Lapras EX, which is a new card you can unlock with the Lapras event and a bunch of healing options there. Uh, there's been a bunch of different play styles that we have seen come up and even some budget decks have risen in the competitive scene as well. So there's a lot of different ways to play the game, e even if it's kind of difficult to get the cards. So uh, odds are within a matter of days, you are going to at least get some cards that you can whip together to play something competitive. As a consolation prize, the game also has rental decks. So if you are able to pull a feature card, like let's say you pull a Machamp EX, you actually unlock the ability to rent a Machamp EX deck. And it's not the best deck in the world, but it is playable. It's great against the computer and you could play it online matches. You are limited in the amount of times you can use that deck. But if you're just starting out and you need something to grind through the, a the rewards against the computer or just play a couple online matches, it's totally fine. A really nice touch is that if you unlock a rental deck and you happen to pull all of the cards in that rental deck, it'll then unlock that list for you so that you can just play it however many times you want. You can battle against the computer or battle against other players online. I was actually kind of surprised with battling against the AI. That was actually pretty fun. The game starts with a bunch of different missions as well as achievements for each one. It's not, it doesn't take that long to actually beat the, the main set of missions. I was able to do that in a day. It has taken me more time to unlock all of the achievements in each one. But one of the things I was really surprised by is the launch of the Lapras event. Now this one has, a, a there's a new Lapras deck that unlocks and you can play against it at different difficulties at which point it introduces new Pokemon and gets harder to fight against and for each time you beat it you get a reward promo pack where there are some extra cards you can get there including a Lapras EX which is not necessarily the best card in the world but it's decently competitive and you can build some cool strategies around that and then there's a new Mankey which synergizes really well with the Primeape that's already in the game making that archetype even more valuable so i love the i want to see more missions that are there for solo players i love the fact that there is an event for lapra specifically and i think that we'll probably see a lot more of these types of events in the game going forward which i think is absolutely fantastic the more single player content in there the better when you play online you can either play against a friend or an online opponent and right now in the online space, it's pretty limited in what you can do. You are playing against random opponents online and you can kind of set if you want to fight against beginner opponents or advanced opponents. I don't know if that actually does much of anything or if anything, everyone just kind of stays at beginner. So the ELO is not really there. Sometimes you'll play against really competitive players. Sometimes you won't. Uh, but regardless, you can play online. The matches play pretty smoothly. And make sure you say thanks at the end of every single match where the player on the receiving end gets a shop credit. You can get five thanks per day. And those credits can help you uh, get stuff in the shop to help even open up even more packs or unlock cosmetics and stuff like that. So make sure you say thanks at the end of every match. 
And it, it is kind of problematic that there's no real ladder or anything to work towards, except that in the at the time of this recording, there is a badge event where you are getting badges for number of wins in the event. And that has given players something to play for. And you get different, like, I think it's five wins, 25 wins, 45 wins, where you can get different levels of badges. And that's really nice. And in absence of a ranked ladder, which I think would be a more sustainable way of keeping players interested in playing the game, uh, this badge event is really nice, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see more events like this in order to keep players playing one another. The thing that has surprised me most about Pokemon TCG Pocket isn't even necessarily Pocket in and of itself. It's Limitless. So Limitless is a website that is a platform for hosting online tournaments. And almost from the very beginning, Limitless put in support for Pokemon TCG Pocket. And it has been amazing to see the growth, how fast the Pokemon TCG Pocket scene has grown. We have seen players or tournaments with 500 players, and most recently there was a tournament that had over a thousand players in it. With Pokemon TCG Live or PTCGO, we are seeing tournaments cap out at like 200, 300 players. And to see the excitement around TCG Pocket with 500 players, a thousand players is mind boggling. And not only, I mean, some people might say, oh, it's just a hot new game, but, and people are downloading it more than Pokemon TCG Live, but I think it's a testament to how good the game is that there are, there's a competitive scene and people want to take it very seriously and are competing in these online tournaments. And I've seen so much discussion on Twitter about deck lists and um, what decks are optimal and what sort of changes we would make here and there. And it's been awesome to see that people are really excited about the competitive connotations of Pokemon TCG Pocket and playing it at such a large scale of tournament and I think that bodes really well for the game especially when the the whole lack of depth or complexity th they're going to add more cards and it's going to get better over time but I think they've hit a really good foundation where the game is a ton of fun to play even if it's not the most it doesn't have as much depth as the original Pokemon TCG I think Pokemon have knocked it out of the park where they have found a wonderful balance of this game is easy enough for new players to get in but if you want to take it super seriously you can it as, as long as you can get the cards Pokemon TCG pocket is a game that's going to evolve over time. And we've already seen it evolve from its pre-release state in New Zealand to what's happening now with all of the different events happening in the game, the Lapras event, the Wonder Pick event, the, the badge event. This game seems to have a ton of support and it's going to keep evolving over time. But what they have here, I, I think is wonderful. They've done a great job of building a an experience that is great for collectors, is great for players, and it's been very successful and I can totally see why. I think they've done a wonderful job with this app. It's I haven't been able to put it down and I'm, I'm playing it a ton. And I think that this game has a really bright future ahead. And I know there are going to be people that are going to have issues with the um, getting specific cards or just to take issue with spending money in general. And it's not going to be for everyone and that's totally fine. But I think that Pokemon have done a wonderful job with this app and I'm probably going to continue playing it. As for whether we cover Pokemon TCG Pocket on the channel, uh, the answer is probably, but it's probably not going to be like an all out thing. Like I'm not going to be starting a new channel anytime soon. Uh, one, because I just don't have the time. Like Pokemon TCG Live slash the main Pokemon TCG keeps me more than busy where I can barely keep up with that side of it, let alone picking up a whole other game. But the, the issues that I have with getting specific cards make it really difficult to cover Pokemon TCG Pocket in a way that I would like because I just, I don't have access to the cards, so I can't make those videos in a, a timely manner, right? I, I could maybe at most make two videos, one with Articuno and one with Mewtwo, and, and maybe I will. But I, I don't think it's realistic for me at this point in time unless I'm, I'm willing to pour in all my money and try and pull pull the Pikachus and all that out. And maybe someday we'll get there, but right now it's not going to be a something that we seriously cover on the channel. But we will cover it from time to time where possible. How are you enjoying Pokemon TCG Pocket? Let me know in the comments below. But for now... I got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at in third person. You can find me on Twitch 
at In Third Person, where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. And check out the website, InThirdPerson.com, for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. So until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.